This is a gift from us to you. One, two, three. We, we wish, wish you a Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. We, we wish you Oh my God. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Cut. Cut. Yes. We got to do the one, two, three. So that's the B. One, two, three. So that we. Okay. One, oh, three. One, two, three. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Oh, no, no, no. Let me know what. Sing the first line. I feel like we're not singing the same tune or something. Am I messing it up? We tried. We're, and this is not. We love you. <laughs> we wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We, we wish you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> wish you a Merry Christmas. And a happy New Year. year. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Be the bridge. Thank you very much. You are listening to the Be the Bridge podcast with Latasha Morrison. Each week, Be The Bridge podcast tackles subjects related to race and culture with the goal of bringing understanding. But I'm going to do it in the spirit of love. So we believe understanding can move us toward racial healing, racial equity, and racial unity. Latasha Morrison is the founder of Be The Bridge, which is an organization responding to racial brokenness and systemic injustice in our world. This podcast is an extension of our vision to make sure people are no longer conditioned by a racialized society, but grounded in truth. If you have not hit the subscribe button, please do so now. Without further ado, let's begin today's podcast. Oh, and stick around for some important information at the end. Hello, Be The Bridge community, and I am so excited. Um, I'm excited because we are just a few days, uh, maybe a little over a week as we're recording this from uh, from Christmas. And as you know, if you followed me, um, you know that I love this season. So I watch Christmas movies 365 days of the year. I listen to Christmas um, um, music whenever I want to because... I feel like as a Christian, I celebrate the birth of Christ every day. And so I feel that I can celebrate Christmas anytime that I want to. So, yes, I am one of those Hallmark um, watching um, young ladies. I also um, have ventured into watching other channels, you know. Um, You know, Christmas is is famous now. I think in 2020, um, when everyone was home, uh, we were looking for some uh, pick-me-up and looking for joy and all of the things and I think a lot of people discovered what I already knew and um, so I am excited because this year we're going to do something a little different I wanted to do a BTB Christmas and so I wanted to bring a few of our staffers on here and I'm going to introduce them in a moment but just to talk about all the things Christmas the things we love Uh, we are in Advent season right now Um, And for those of you who uh, don't quite know what Avid is, because I don't want to take that for granted, because I know in some denominations um, you hear about it and you do readings. um, And then in others, um, you you don't. And so um, I want to read something from Avid Rhythms. And so uh, one of my traditions is I always get a, sometimes people gift them to me, um, an Avid um, um, Bible study. And one of the ones that I love is by She Reads Truth. Um, They're not paying me to say this, but this is what I, (laughs) the one that I'm using this year. Um, Advent 2022, um, Joy of Every Long and Heart. I love, I actually really love their um, their stuff. And um, I have a couple, another one um, that I did last year. So I do different ones. I've done, I think Truth Table has done one um, and some different ones. But this is what I'm using this year, and it says, Avent is a season to intentionally slow our pace, contemplating and celebrating the first coming of Christ while also anticipating his promised return. Take time today to pause from the busyness of the season to catch up on your reading, make space for prayer, and rest in the presence of the Lord. So this is a time that we remember um, whom we serve. And so I know without Christ, I am a... Um, a person of faith and so I could not do the work that I'm doing like it is too much like even today t- 
Today was heavy. Um, there are things in our personal lives that are happening. Then there's things in the culture and there's things in the world. There's a lot of heartbreak. And I do want to hold space um, as we begin to talk about um, some of these things. I want to hold space for those that have a difficult time during the holidays, that these holidays um, do not bring joy. Um, there are people who, you know, you're listening and you don't have family or you don't have connections. So those of you who are listening, you know, I want you to think about this, this season, you know, maybe someone in your neighborhood, someone in your church or someone in your life that may, may be holding this to themselves. Check in with people, um, see if people want to spend um, the holidays with you or have dinner with you or do some of the um, um, the, the pre-celebration things um, you do. Call people and just check in with them. You know, I wanted this year to make sure I, I got a chance. Um, I have a great aunt that is 93 um, years old and I wanted to make sure that I um, go see her. Another thing is it, because of the life that I, I live, um, it's hard sometimes for me to find time to connect um, like I would like to. And so um, I try to use this time when I have time off to kind of spend some time with people that I haven't had that opportunity to do that. And so um, if that's you, um, do that. And then the other thing is I find so much joy in um, giving and giving to others during this season. So you can connect with local organizations, where you can serve and give. There's nothing like that that can bring um, joy, um, even during this season when you're giving out of your yourself and giving out of your um, your overflow. And so, um, and even as a single person, I know some of you you're you're listening to this, and maybe you don't have children, but you have extended family. So those of you who have children, um, you know, extend you know, extend yourselves and your family to. Uh, maybe friends in your community that don't have um, that don't have children, and I do know that there are a lot of um, adoption agencies and um, and children's um, homes that are sometimes looking for people to come and visit. Um, I, I know growing up, we used to and um, we used to actually go to a rest home and sing carols and give out gifts. And I mean, because do you believe that some people that are in um, you know, uh, retirement centers and, and rest homes do not get visits from their um, from their families. And so that's just another way that if you're by yourself, you can go and step out and do something like that during this season. So I wanted to say that before we, we got into this. Um, I have Micah Smith here, um, who is the director of our operations, um, Michelle Evans, um, who is our executive administrator, um, Lauren Brown, who is our podcast manager, uh, merch manager, and also uh, my um, executive assistant. So she has, she wears three hats. That's what you do around here and be the bridge. You got to wear a lot of hats, you know. <laughs> um, so you, everybody has like three jobs. So although I said uh, Micah Smith is over operations, he probably does human resources, finances. <laughs> And, <laughs> and all other tasks needed. <laughs> so yeah, he said loading U-Hauls, um, <laughs> taking stuff back to storage. Yes, <laughs> we do all the things. But we are um, we are grateful to be here. And I want to. What I'd love to hear is um, what are some things that you enjoy um, about this season? And maybe maybe one. Give me one word. And then what I would like to hear is maybe what is a tradition that you have um, in your family? Or maybe if you don't, what tradition would you like to start? We're going to start with Michelle. I knew it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, so the question, what do I enjoy? One word? Yeah, yeah one, one word. Okay, comfort. That's what okay. came to my mind when you said it, comfort. Okay. Um, and that's like, you know, my blanket, I have a basket of Christmas blankets and oh. Oh. I like all the lights out except for the Christmas lights in the house and okay. on the couch with the blanket, watching a movie, having a whatever, you know, a hot chocolate or a beverage or whatever with the family. Oh. Um, so I do love that comfort. My favorite tradition would be my family, my immediate family. We do um, a secret Santa amongst ourselves every year. Um, okay. We do it. 
typically like right after Thanksgiving, we pull names and it's always fun because Miles is my youngest. And so he gets so excited and we have to convince him not to tell anyone <laughs> who, he, who he has. And he has to be able to navigate who he's going to go shopping with. And we all go out together one night in one car. We go and split up like, you know, an open mall somewhere uh-huh. and everyone kind of just takes off and find, and we do it with a little bit of money, like okay. $25, $30 a person. But okay. we're a family of five, so it okay. adds up. <laughs> yeah, and then everyone does like a little short wish list of things that they want. And okay. really the reason I love it so much is it's really fun that night. And then we go to dinner afterwards and everyone's like hiding their stuff and comes Aww. home immediately and like wraps it up and puts it under the tree. And then we open them on Christmas Eve, like when we do our pajamas. And they're the most special and like intentional gifts of the whole season. Like they're just Aww. so special that... Like, you remember that I said I wanted this thing and you took this time to plan this special gift for me and we all love it. So, so much so that Aria said she got an extra credit assignment in school this week of one of your favorite favorite Christmas memories and she had to draw it and that's what she sketched was our Secret Santa evening. So, it's fun. Oh, that's so good. And you do the PJs. We do. Every year. I love to tell you, that's one thing as a single person, like that's one thing that I miss because I try to get my family. I go home to North Carolina for Christmas. And so it's my aunt, my mom, my brother. They are like bah humbug when it comes to PJs. My mom will participate with me, but no one else. So I'm going to make Chala participate with me this year. (laughs) Even if you buy them all the pajamas, like make everyone. No, I bought my mom a pair. And um, she's the only one. My aunt said, pajamas are hot. She don't wear them. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all pray for me. Pray for me. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, let's go to Micah. Okay. Um, th- First of all, I'm excited to be on here with you. It's uh, interesting to be here with the four of you on the podcast because uh, I know we meet a lot behind the scenes and uh, it gets crazy sometimes. Maybe we'll not get t- to that too far into it this time, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I enjoy being with y'all. Um, I think the word that comes to mind for me is peace. There's just something about Christmas when everything just kind of slows down a little bit. And there's all this craziness. We're in the middle of craziness all the time and be the bridge with right. family stuff, with all the things going. And there's just a moment where all of a sudden it starts to kind of just like slow for a moment. Yeah. And I love it. I was talking to Michelle the other day. It's like just having your all, all your baby birds in the nest, you know? It's like when they all get to come back and, yes, and everyone's absolutely. in the house. And so you're all together, you know? And I, I have four kids, uh, 18 to 8. And so mm-hmm. just having us all just kind of slow down and be together more through the season. Um, I, I love that. I just have a lot of traditions that I have. I feel strongly about um, that, that I grew uh-huh. up with, and I actually had to uh, convert my wife to these. She, she's a little bit of a Grinch. She, she's self-proclaimed <laughs> Grinch. She's got a stocking. We have stockings, and she bought one for herself that has the Grinch on it. So okay. that's, that's what I'm looking with. But, but she loves Christmas too now. Uh, I think she always has, but in terms of the traditions aspect. Uh-huh. And uh, one of the ones I've always lived with is a, a live tree. So we go out to the Christmas tree farm and get a live tree. And there was two years in there, like uh, I had hurt my knee and she was like, oh, let's get, just get an artificial tree. Cause that's always what she wants to do, get an artificial tree, it's easier. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> the next year after that, she was like, you know what? I missed the live tree. Aww. So, <laughs> Aww. <laughs> um, but I think the tradition that I would point out most is uh, we get an ornament. Each of our kids gets an ornament every year that somehow reflects their year. And so, um, so every year we add a new batch of ornaments to the tree, and and I love it because that was something I did as a kid. Like, uh, my family was a bit messy growing up, but we always had those little Christmas things, and that's why I think I hold on to them so strong. Wow! And so we have, uh, I, I would get ornaments every year, and my mom passed uh, five years ago in January. And uh, I went and found, that was one thing I went and found was all my ornaments. And so, so now I got ornaments on the tree. I have like a little train that looks like a stained glass window from 1978 up there, right? Wow. I love and that. I love train today. And he has one up from 2010, you know, and then they have all their little ornaments stuck up on the tree and they get it. And so now it's gone from just a, our first year, it was just like a couple of ornaments that someone gave us as a wedding gifts, right? And now our tree is full. We can hardly even find place for all the ornaments on them and just keep adding to them every year. And I love it. And I love thinking about each one and why it's hanging up there. Even ones like these random ones, like when my son was two, 
He's 15 now. Um, he got the top of an M&M container that was a holiday container, had a little loop on it and stuck it on the tree. <laughs> That's used to hanging up there for 13 years because I thought it was funny. And so it just became one of our ornaments. Too. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> I love that. Oh, that's cute. Oh, that's so great. I love I it. Think we sh- I think you should take some pictures and we can post them on our Instagram when we um, when we play when we actually air this podcast. Uh, but I love that tradition. I love what you said, like that, you know, um, there was some messiness growing up, but this is one tradition that you had when you were little that you hold on to. And um, I think that's what makes it special. So we can find like, just, you know, in the midst of that, there are like little things that we can hold on to and mm-hmm. kind of um, celebrate those things, um, you know, with with your family. Mm-hmm. Um, Lauren, you're next. Yes, my word is joy. Um, it makes me happy. Uh, so I'll have, a, I make, I'll make a confession. Last year, I thought I, I canceled Christmas for the Browns and, <laughs> so I'm the one that really does all the Christmas things and coming out of COVID, I was like, I'm not doing it. I'm not putting up anything. And I devastated everybody, all my kids, especially my son. But this year I was encouraged to do all the things and I'm not really a decorator. So Latasha has like <laughs> this energy about Christmas that makes you think you can decorate. You look at her stuff. And now I came home and was like, I could do this. And I looked at my tree. I was like, oh, this don't look right. Uh, it's a little, she a little bear. So, wrong. but I did buy like a reef that is like animated. So when you walk by the house, it sings songs and it brings me the most joy. Like now when I go downstairs, I see all the things um, that I have out and the ornaments and the lights. I like sparkly things. So I'm not like a Santa snow person. It's definitely the glitter and the lights. The more glitter, it's all over the house. I love it. Um, so it's joy. And it makes me remember when I grew up how how much fun we used to have. It was mm-hmm. joy coming down to the tree. We didn't really have traditions. I was an um, uh, only child. So it was just lots of overkill of, of toys, which <laughs> I guess is a tradition because that's what I did with my kids, overkill. <laughs> and um, the tradition that I started with my family is the pajama, the, but the PJs. So I buy them. They never know what it is. They know at the, in, the, in the morning, it's gonna be at the foot of their bed and they have to wear it. So we've done a Christmas story. My son wore the pink pajama um, outfit. He loved it, took pictures, went somewhere with his friends. I have photos that he would probably die if I shared on Instagram with him. Yeah, let's put those That sounds good. <laughs> um, we had these little pimp um, sweatsuits with a, a Santa Claus <laughs> tiger on the back. And he had on a little glittery hat. So it's the pajamas. And I'm looking forward to that this year. I won't buy them for everybody, which is sad because now I'm an empty nester. But they have, to co- they have to come to my house and have their pajamas on. So, okay. Okay. Those are all great things. And so you're listening to this. Uh, maybe these are little, really affordable things that you can um, that you can do uh, with your family. I love the, or, um, the ornament. Um, you see, I had a tree growing up. We, my family has always been into decor. You know, if it, anybody knows me, you've been to my house. I love home decor. I love, I love home I love, decor. Home decor. Home decor. Home decor. Home decor. Home decor. We have an exciting announcement. If you are already a Be The Bridge group leader or desire to lead or start a Be The Bridge group, Be The Bridge is having its first leader summit. You can be a part of the Be The Bridge inaugural leader summit on January 13th and 14th here in Atlanta. Yes, MLK weekend here in Atlanta. There will be sessions on contemplative prayer, theology and reconciliation, the art of facilitation, and so much more. This will be a time for leader engagement where every leader can be refreshed, refilled, and renewed. Breakfast and lunch are included in the summit price. Visit bethebridge.com backslash summit for more information. That's bethebridge.com backslash summit for more information. Come to Atlanta and grow as a leader this upcoming MLK weekend, January 13th and 14th. Spots are limited and going fast, so sign up today. Go to bethebridge.com backslash summit for more information. And so our 
trees have always had themes, and so I could never put random um, ornaments on the trees. So I remember one year we had a bear, a teddy bear tree. So all the ornaments were teddy bear, and then we had that for several years. And then um, we had a we had a fake tree that was like a a, um, a flock, like um, had like snow on it, flock tree, and. Um, and we, it was apples, so she had, it was all red, red and white, um, ap, it was like apples on the tree. Uh, my grandmother always had a white tree, uh, a, a, it's a green tree with white lights and all white ornaments and doves on it. And my aunt has yep. kept up that tradition. So we've had to replace the ornaments with new ornaments, but it's and we've added a little silver in there um nice. also so we've kept up that um that particular tradition and then my, when my brother um, i was probably about 17 and a half when my brother was born and we had a clown tree so all the ornaments that my mom had on the tree were little clowns i don't know mm -hmm. where she found this uh, stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah like uh, -uh. i don't want to i don't want it was mm -hmm. a clown tree yes nope. we had a clown tree um his Did we nursery. do away with that particular tree? And we're not <laughs> yes. His nursery was also clowns. And he is, my brother is traumatized. He doesn't like anything to do with I'm circus sure. or. <laughs> Poor buddy. He's so, he, he doesn't want to do anything with it. But, um, but yeah, I think that is like really excited just to hear um, some, some of the things that we celebrate. What is something that's memorable to you? Like, um, um, and, and sometimes like there's some memories of Christmas that maybe it's a good memory or maybe it's just something that you think about at this season all the time that um, that's not, um, you know, as good. I, I, I can remember, you know, when my, when my parents divorced, that was like a definitely a, 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 a change, a shift in how Christmas was celebrated. But one of the things my grandparents did was they would always come um, to our house um, that morning to see us open our gifts, mm -hmm. but they would mm -hmm. not bring their gifts. Oh, wow. And so this is my mom's, my maternal um, grandparents. So they would come to our house and they would not bring their gifts for us. We had to come to their house yeah. uh, when it was time for dinner to open up any gifts there. And, <laughs> um, and so my aunt in some way has kind of continued on that. My grandmother loved the season. She would play um, uh, this Christmas mm -hmm. on, on this record player that we had up until just a few years ago in her dining room. And my aunt has made like a playlist of like all of these like favorite songs that my grandmother um, uh, used to like to listen to, and they play them at Christmas time. And um, and so I one year said I want to make the playlist, so I made the playlist, and of course, you know, he here I am. I'm all about diversity, inclusion, belonging, equity, like <laughs> all of these things. So I want to give every Christmas song a chance. Yes. So I had a Christmas playlist that was very diverse. I had some Kelly Clarkson in there, some uh, it was some Elvis, some different people in there. My family said, you are fired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. They only want the brown people, and they all, and it has to be R and B, and it has to be like around the '70s, '80s. Yeah. She does have a more yeah, updated a playlist. Stuff. You know, she has an updated one with you know boys to men and different things like mm -hmm. that. But they like the old, like the Supremes, and uh, you know all the old, old Christmas, the, the the Temptations, Michael Jackson, you know the Jackson Five, all of that stuff. That's what they like, and um, that's what we listen to. So um, those, I think, when I if I think of the most memorable Christmas, it, I, I will say something I think about all the time. This is probably not. My grandmother passed around Christmas, a few days before Christmas, and this was it was her favorite season. Mm -hmm. And our family still decided to celebrate like in her honor. Mm -hmm. And her, we um, buried her the day after Christmas. And mm -hmm. so, um, so that was just, and we had like poinsettias and different things mm -hmm. like that, um, you know, at her funeral. So that was just. So we always, when we at Christmas time, we always think of my grandmother. But it's not in a sad way. It's always in a, a, a joyful way. And the way we celebrate Christmas as a family is to really honor her and to remember her um, and to celebrate her life. 
about you? Let's 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 start off with Micah. Okay. Um, I guess two things pop into mind, like specific Christmases. I'm having a hard time thinking of, but <laughs> I can think of like one is further back where I just remember like my mom was over the top about. <laughs> like I said she had, had some traditions, but like I, I've cut most of them because it was just. It, she, she traumatized me on Christmas morning, I'm telling you. Because <laughs> we had to do so many things before we could open the presents. It was like after Like lunch. what? That's so interesting. So, so we'd wake up and we'd have to make a breakfast thing like in the kitchen. It was some sort of like, it wasn't it wasn't an easy thing either. It was like a from scratch. We had to roll up this nuts and sweet pastry sort of thing with some sort of orange topping that took forever. Uh-huh. And then we had to do some sort of nativity reading. And there was a coloring book we pulled out. <laughs> this giant Jesus coloring book, right? And we color a picture every year while we did the nativity reading. And, and then we tell our favorite things about Christmas. It was, <laughs> it was wild. So, so that sticks out to me. But, um, but a more recent one, I think, um, just, and this is more uh, my wife Amy was reflecting the other day, just remembering, and this ties into the ornament uh-huh. as well. Just remembering how we were sitting around on my daughter's first Christmas and putting her first ornament on the tree, and how she was thinking about, you know, oh, what will it look like when this tree is full and when our kids are growing and all that sort mm-hmm. of stuff. Just dreaming about that, mm-hmm. and she said said something that stuck with me the other day that was like. It was don't forget about the dreams you dreamed that you're living in now mm. because she was looking at our tree now and thinking about oh I used to dream about this tree and all the things it represents of our kids growing up oh, and nice. and seeing them now like we have we, our oldest turned 18 like all of a sudden we have this uh, alleged adult in the house you know and mm. just who was, was like one and she was we were just reflecting on that Christmas when we had our first child and and the tree and and what it was like to have you know that new family environment and now thinking about how we're living that out with four kids and this tree full of memories that represents all of the things that have happened since then so you have really won amy over with Mm -hmm. all the christmas yes 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 i oh good um what about you lord Uh, let's see. I was thinking about that. I remember because I was, if there was an abundance of toys, I remember, all right, I'm going to date myself a little bit, but I remember this because I want it so bad. So my grandmother and my mom were pranksters and that did carry over to me. So, um, I wanted one thing and I wanted that doggone Barbie doll head. (laughs) Yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. That Barbie doll head. She came with that comb, that brush, and the that blue makeup. The, yes, the blue eyeshadow. Yes. Uh-huh. And my they. So I opened up all my gifts, and she wasn't under there, and I was devastated. I did get the uh, Diana Ross. Like Diana Ross, she had fingernails, long fingernails, and long silky hair. And she, <laughs> listen, she had on these high heels. It was fabulous. But I did, I did get her. But my. So they waited. Like we ate dinner and everything and then all of a sudden my grandmother put it in the bathroom and I went in the bathroom it was sitting sitting on top of the uh the toilet the toilet seat thing I felt oh. I remember screaming and hollering through the house and so now I do that I do that to my kids and I still do it now and they're 25 and 28 because I asked them for five things get tell me five things they're going they know they're going to pretty much get it but I tried it like Daniel asked for a uh, um, Chad Ocho Cinco um, jersey a long time ago. I took a uh, a paper towel uh, roller. I rolled that thing and put it inside the paper towel too. And he had to pull it. <laughs> he was trying to figure out. He was like, "Why did I get this?" But I was like, "Well, look at it." And so he had to pull it out. Sapphire. We would take the sneakers and put them in something else. It was. It's just fun. So yeah, I remember just fun. playing tricks with the gifts. That is fun. But that Barbie doll head, but once you cut that hair, it's a wrap. Yeah, it doesn't grow back. Those huge heads. Yes. It was only like from half of the way of the chest yeah. and like but up. And it ha- I mean, the blue eyeshadow. It's the blue eyeshadow for me. It was. It's that part. And we loved it. But do you remember when they made a brown Barbie doll yeah, head? Yeah, absolutely. It yes. was like, she was out of here. I had to give me a <laughs> So funny. She had barrettes. 
rollers. <laughs> we put the ro- sponge rollers on there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Messed around and put a hot curler on there and, there and destroyed it. <laughs> <laughs> how many, how many kids did that? I mean, we just destroyed hair. Cut, mm-hmm. cut in hair thinking it was going to grow back. Did you put what a hot comb? You? I know. Coloring it with markers, all kind of crazy yes. stuff. What about you, Sorry, Michelle? Micah. Uh, my favorite <laughs> childhood memory would probably be like having so much pride in decorating. It just felt something like putting everything out. It was so special. All the things. It looked the exact same every year, which I don't know why it had to be that way. Like this one here. We had that... I'm going to date myself to like a Santa that was like hard and big and it like Uh it was like it was before blow up things happened. (laughs) Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Like Uh uh, Uh I don't even it's ridiculous and he was inside like looking out the window. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Because then Christmas trees went in the windows too that you could see them from the street like houses Uh aren't really designed like that anymore. Um, But I remember once when my mother um It was during the time that she was sick and stuff around Christmas. And we always had an artificial white tree, red light and bulbs and white light, the same plastic white. It wasn't even flocked. It was like a plastic white tree. And I decided I'm buying a Christmas tree, a live Christmas tree. And I went and did it myself and brought it home and like decorated it. And like, man, I brought her in there because she was like, you know, she was ill at that time. I was so proud of that tree and like doing that was like the adult thing that I did. I can contribute to Christmas now. (laughs) Um, so that's honestly a lot of the childhood years while I know they were happy and full of you know good things I don't remember like the details from I think I've just kind of like it's not in my mind I'm sitting here trying to remember like what was really special about and there's nothing particular specific that I remember but I know that it was good and that it was full you know if that makes sense yeah Yeah. there's a feeling that yeah there's a feeling yeah feeling that you have yeah Yeah. from that moment that it was good and um, the last question, what are some traditional meals that um, that you cook? What are some traditional meals that you cook? I mean, I think, sadly, Thanksgiving and Christmas are probably just the only holidays that I probably do cook heavy cooking a little mm-hmm. bit. Um, but sadly, yeah. So what are some things that you... Um, you cook or either that you would like to cook like you have this aspiration of doing it like you envision it but it just never happens you think lauren should go first <laughs> yes lauren lauren yes you are cheating you are, the only reason you're doing it because you know all right lauren is not all right so i don't do thanksgiving cooking i did sides okay. i will go get my honey baked ham i'm going to get a honey baked ham yes. for christmas but what I do for my family is I will do brunch because I'll do like the small things. We'll have like a taco bar. We'll have like chicken and waffles, fried fish or stuff, something small, deviled eggs. It's just a bunch of finger foods. My mom likes appetizers, so that that's her jam. So she loves that. I'm not the cook, but I will bake. So I will bake cookies for everybody. I make like four types of cookies and Ooh. I'll go I'll go get my little dollar store tins to put them in and <laughs> And everybody goes home with their cookies, but okay. I'm definitely not the cook. So you actually bake the cookies from scratch? You're I do. not buying the, no. ones, the dough that's pre-made? No. I'm not, okay. Absolutely not. I have a mixer downstairs. I only use it for Christmas cookies. <laughs> and my sweet potato pie, because I make a sweet potato mm. pie, too. Okay. But, okay. Um, yeah, baking, no side. Listen, that cooking is not for the faint of heart. I know, I know. But if you love to bake, that's amazing. And Lauren, an idea for you? A cookie party where you can have people, everyone brings a dozen or two of cookies that they make, Christmas cookies, yeah. and you buy the little boxes and everyone goes home with like an assortment, I don't like to bake, mm. assortment of cookies. I'm picky with <laughs> my they cookies, take home. So they have to be chewy, but crispy yeah. on the outside. Mm. My friend did that. Cookies. My friend did that at her Christmas party where mm-hmm. everybody was supposed to bring cookies. I think everybody did it. I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a confession. I have a confession. Like, I love the idea of people, like, decorating cookies. And, I've, you know, I've done that with my little cousins where you buy the cookies and you decorate them. Mm-hmm. Like, or either bake the Pillsbury ones or whatever. Oh. But I have a confession. I have never made a cookie from scratch, ever. <laughs> test test it before you give it out. Test it before yeah. you give it out. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, because a, a friend of mine, she made some from scratch, and they were beautiful. I mean, she colored. I mean, the decorating was pr- so pretty. I mean, and put them in the wrappers. Oh, no, it was so good. That. But they taste like trash. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, I mean, see, I hope they're not listening that. to this podcast. I don't, <laughs> I don't do those type of cookies. I do like a brownie fudge cookie. Mm, I do nice. a toffee cookie. And I do a red velvet cookie. That's new. We tried that. That's that's a new one. Okay. And then I have a, a, a oatmeal one. We don't like the raisins in it, so it's oatmeal. And then I have to do a a, a walnut cookie for my mom. Her and those walnuts. Okay. Oh <laughs> what about you, um, um, uh, Michelle? We do breakfast tacos. We love that. I have to have it every year. So we just okay. I make all the. Everything like hash from hash browns, bacon, sausage, all the toppings, and then a breakfast burritos. That's what we do. And everyone uh-huh. just puts all the stuff in. And I make monkey bread too every Christmas. So we have to have those two things. Okay. I don't have a dinner tradition. Uh, we tend to like go away from the traditional Christmas. We we'll want like Mexican food. You know, we're from California, uh-huh. so we always want Mexican. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But the breakfast burritos and the monkey bread are a must. And they have to wait because I don't like being in the kitchen cooking while everyone's having fun and doing their whole thing. So y'all got to wait until I do that and then we can. That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What about you, Micah? Um, it's funny because uh, some things I think cross racial culture and some things are very different because, uh-huh. you know, I'm all about the honey baked hams on, uh, and <laughs> that's what I'm about. And, uh, uh, you know, I think we do a breakfast casserole on Christmas, yes. but we're not big Christmas food people. Um, we're Thanksgiving, like Thanksgiving's our big cooking holiday, and New Year's, right? Okay. New Year's, you have certain things you have to eat. Hog chow, greens, and black-eyed peas, right? Okay. Pause. I need pause. You run that back. Pause. What, that? Hog what, what is hog's chow? <laughs> Jowl. It's like Jowl. Thing. I don't know. It's introduced to me. Chitless. Um, it's chitless. You know, it sound like chitless. I, I do I'm work in West chitless. Tennessee, and and we're in a rural part of Tennessee, and that's where my wife's family grew up. And it is all. It's like good luck and good fortune and all that sort of stuff. And so they have to. It's it's a. Is it the? I don't know what the part jowl is. is like. This part, like the cheek or something, right? But yeah, you cook it up. It's kind of like bacon, a little bit tougher, maybe thicker. Oh. Um, yeah. So I need a picture of that on Christmas. So it's white people chitlins. Oh my goodness. Chitterlees. Um, or yeah, pork but, or how we say pork belly. Pork belly. They try to yeah. sophisticate yeah. a bougie fire. Pork belly. Yes. Pork <laughs> That's jowls. Fat, fat. Jowls. Pork jowls. Okay, I need a picture of that on Christmas Day, please. Yeah. Okay. But okay. Growing we up, I want to say this. Growing up, um my mom. Um, <laughs> She cannot cook. She she couldn't cook at all. <laughs> she insisted on trying to cook a big Christmas meal. Oh, it was it was, it was wild. Um, but I mean, our, our I always say our home kitchen was Applebee's because there's an Applebee's in town. That's where we always went. <laughs> but she tried cook, and one of the things she always made and pulled off was a Coca Cola salad, which is I've a, heard of that. It's a Jello salad. So we got our gelatin white person like. <laughs> Oh my god! There that, that people make fun of us for. So uh, okay, you know, I know in the Beast Bridge admin chat, there's the whole threads on the Jello. Uh, yes, okay. We do. We had one that was legitimate, and I thought it was good for Christmas. It was. Look, he did like this. Like, mm, <laughs> thought it was good. It was a, we called it Coca Cola salad. It had no lettuce in it whatsoever. Just <laughs> if you are listening to this, if you did, if your family had a Coca Cola salad. Please tag us. I want to see pictures of this Coca-Cola salad and yes, yes. and all the things. But mm-hmm. the thing is, it's so beautiful. Like, I think um, Christmas is that season that really c- brings people together. You see a lot of kindness, generosity, mm-hmm. um, love. You know, there's, there's, there's some beauty um, in this season in the midst of a lot of brokenness. Mm-hmm. And I, I, mm-hmm. um, I like the time to just take the time to pause and so that's one of the reasons why even at Be The Bridge we um, give you know time between um, time off for Christmas through um, through New Year's um, so that people can 
kind of take some time to reflect and to pause and just prepare yourself um, for the new year. Um, and that's just like a form of, of self-care um, and just so you can have time with your family. We do, we run hard, like we do a lot of stuff. and. Um, and so it's good for us to do that. And so, as you know, one of the things that I do each year, uh, one of the things that I do is I talk about some of the movies that I have watched. Um, and there are a lot of Christmas movies. Let me tell you guys, Hallmark has stepped it up. Like, I mean, I'm talking about plot and script writing. I'm like, oh, this has got little layers in it. Like, this is a couple things going on at once. You know, it's like, oh, I didn't know that was going to happen. But, um, and just every, if you notice, like every, um, streaming service they have a couple holiday movies mm -hmm. that you can choose from disney all the, all the different ones um i just watched one on bt plus mm -hmm. uh first of all we need to talk about all these streaming services they need to start combining or partnering mm -hmm. up yes and, yes and, and, it's ridiculous because it, it's just ridiculous i can't mm -hmm. even keep up but most of them have like some type of christmas movies and so i um had an opportunity to talk with um, three young women that I met at Christmas Con. Yes, I went to Christmas Con. Um, and I will explain all of that to you um, in just a moment. So I want you to just lean into this conversation with some ladies I met. You're going to hear their accent. They are from New Orleans. Um, and, and one of them lives in Texas now, but still has the accent. And uh, we're just going to share our experiences at Christmas Con, good and bad, and just some of the movies that we thought stood out. And so we're still in the middle of um, the holiday movie season. Um, you know, Hallmark and Lifetime, they start theirs back in October and they run them like up until like the first week of, um, the first couple days of, of, of January. And so there's a lot. So as we're recording this, there's some that we're not gonna get a chance to talk about because they haven't aired yet. Uh, but we're gonna, I may bring some of those conversations on um, over on Instagram Live um, throughout the season. I think I'm gonna have a conversation um, this week um, on Instagram Live. So thank you so much for listening to us and um, the BTB Christmas. Thank you, um, Lauren and Micah and Michelle for jumping on here and sharing your traditions. So we, yeah, was fun. Fun. yeah. <laughs> we hope that each of you have a, um, a blessed holiday season that you take time to pause and to contemplate and to remember um, what this season um, is truly about and that you make sure that you extend yourself um, to others during this season. Thanks so much. Go to the donors table if you'd like to hear the unedited version of this podcast. Thanks for listening to the Be The Bridge podcast. To find out more about the Be The Bridge organization and or to become a bridge builder in your community, go to bethebridge.com. Again, that's bethebridge.com. If you've enjoyed this podcast, remember to rate and review it on this platform and share it with as many people as you possibly can. You can also connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Today's show was edited, recorded, and produced by Trayvon Potts at Integrated Entertainment Studios in Metro Atlanta, Georgia. The host and executive producer is Latasha Morrison. Lauren C. Brown is the senior producer. And transcribed by Sarah Conitzer. Please join us next time. This has been a Be The Bridge production. <laughs>